Good morning and welcome. <laughs> That's so good. Would you like it better if it had a little Belgian flag in it? Do you I'd think? like it better if it had a lot of sugar and tasted like Coke. Good old. Stop. Well, it's on my shirt, so that didn't last very long. Chocolate chip cookies. What? Oh. <laughs> it's got almost fun with a chair. We are docking in Zeebrugge, Belgium. But before we start off on our adventure, Emily wanted to share some of her thoughts about last night's activities. Welcome to another episode of Must See Adventures. Today is day seven of our Anthem of the Seas Norway and Belgium cruise. And if you've been watching, and if you haven't been watching, you gotta go back and watch those previous episodes. They are fantastic. But today we are in Belgium. Belgium! Yes. We're about to dock in Zeebrugge. Or Zeebrugge. 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 I've yeah. heard we've Zeebrugge. heard, I think we've heard it pronounced about four different ways on yeah. the ship. Um, so we're about to dock there. And then we are actually going to Ghent today. Uh, we're going to Cabo to Yes. Most people are going to Bruges, but we are going to Ghent. People zig, we zag. <laughs> and I mean, the description of Ghent is awesome. Like I think we're going to see some castles. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Definitely some canals and uh, interesting <clears throat> architecture. It's supposed to be a really historical city. I don't know if I told you this, you two this, but my boss, Jesse, back home has been to Bruges and Ghent, and she loved Ghent more than Bruges. So. I've heard really good things. I just saw someone else that I know post recently that they were in Ghent and that they loved it. So. We'll see. Yesterday, we got to experience our first specialty dining, which was Azumi here on Deck 5, which is where we currently are. And what did you think of Azumi? I thought it was pretty good. I, I got a California roll, and I really enjoyed it. And then I ate a little bit of their food, and it was, it was all good. The dessert, though, we got we all got our own of the little like lava cakes. That was really, really good. One interesting observation I had, the reservation was at 6.30, like prime dining time, I think. And the restaurant was fairly empty. Uh, it, it's kind of cool too. It's very small, I must say. Like there's like maybe like seven tables like inside the restaurant. There's a long sushi bar. Then there's tables like out on the Esplanade, which I thought was actually kind of neat. We wanted to be in the restaurant and we were in the restaurant, so that was cool. But I walked by later, like around 8 30, 9 o'clock, and it was a full house oh, really? in there. Yeah. I didn't know that. So I think that might be more of a late dining spot, honestly. Interesting. Yeah, maybe we were kind of in between times. Maybe people stick to the early and late dining times. We went at 6 30, but that worked really well for us because we were able to pick a little bit of an earlier time than we've been doing for my time dining. We're about to go to the music hall for our meeting spot for the Ghent Canal Tour, but I wanted to talk about one last thing. What was that show we watched last night, Emily? Uh, we watched this guy, his name is Grunway Tom. I don't know, are you saying that right? Yeah, I think so. Um, and he's kind of like a comedian, juggler kind of guy. It was very good. I think we all really enjoyed it. He was super funny. He was so high energy. He was very high energy. He was like he running around. And, and here's the thing. We almost showed up a little bit late because we are going to try and watch this couple show. I'm glad we didn't because <laughs> anytime someone came in late, that he would bring the house lights up and he would call them out for it. And glad it wasn't us. And <laughs> not, Okay, and he didn't just do that for like the first couple minutes of the show. It was all throughout the show. So maybe 30 minutes in, someone comes in. He brings the lights on. He says, hey, thanks for joining us. Talks to the person, asks where they're from. I mean, he even went through half of the show again he in fast time the to catch show. someone up on what they had missed. It was hilarious. It was so funny. It was the, well, I'm tipping in this chair. It was quite possibly the best cruise show I've ever seen, to be honest. I, it yeah. was gut, it was. <laughs> it was gut, <laughs> it was It was gut. We just had a kind gentleman walk by, offered to take our photo. So we'll put a photo of that right in here somewhere. I guess it looks like we're trying to leave. But yeah. It does, it we, looks like we're taking photos. I know, we do have to run to the, to, the, to the excursion, but I mean, it was just like belly hurt laughter. I mean, I yeah, was just I laughing I, so hard. I don't think I stopped laughing through that entire show. It, it was, was just nonstop racking up. And the good news is he's in the theater again tonight on our farewell party. And I, he's, I think, on our cruise that we're about to go on next. So we might have to go see the same show again. Hot. Make a way downtown. Today 
today we are group number eight. They're about to call group seven. We're almost up next. Right, oh, seven, seven, see, there's seven. The group has been called and now we're, the gangway is a little different today. It's actually the gangway where we boarded the ship. We're on deck five instead of going to deck two. A little, little log jam right now, but we should be off the ship in no time. Bruges was very different from the ports that we experienced in Norway. It was a much more industrial port with lots of different shipping containers and large freighters that were coming in and out of the port. We made our way through the crowds off the ship and over to our motor coach for our exciting tour. Please buckle up, that's mandatory. Use the safety bells and uh, during the ride, we're all supposed to remain seated. Uh, right now, you can see these high trees. These are the so-called poplar trees. And poplar trees are extremely typical of this landscape. A highway, and it will bring us to the ringway around Bruges. And from there, we'll take the E40 highway to Ghent. Bruges is actually the port where most of the auto shipments come into Europe. Most vehicles that are shipped into Europe come through Zebruge. There are auto liners that arrive every day. It takes almost 48 hours to unload every car off of the auto liners that come into the port, and there's a whole team of people who drive each vehicle off of the ship. While this was not the most scenic of ports, it was still really interesting. We passed a large Bridgestone warehouse where all of the tires that are shipped into Western Europe come through. So interestingly enough, every single tire that we saw on our trip probably passed through this port. Behind this building that we start our boat tour, uh, this is called the Bailoke site. Uh, it used to be an abbey. Uh, then it became a hospital and today it is um, a cultural center, an arts center, uh, also partly, let's say, run by the university. The city of Ghent is a quirky and vibrant town. In the Middle Ages, it was a prominent city, and today it's mostly known as a university town, brimming with students and pedestrians. One thing you might want to note if you're considering booking this excursion is that the canal boats tend to be pretty busy. We were on a very full boat and were squeezed into every last seat. That being said, this was a really good value for an excursion. We had the hour-long motor coach ride both ways, plus the tour of the canal and some time on our own to explore. This was a really great excursion for the price. Right and left we find two statues. Together they express the birth of Ghent. And the left one is on the wooden facade. And Ghent was found at the confluence of two rivers, the river Lys and Schell, and that's what these tell us. The woman on the right represents the river Lys, the man on the left, the Schell, and Ghent was their baby. That was the idea. Sometimes you see people magnet fishing here, looking for bicycles, other treasures. And a few weeks ago, there was a guy standing there at those steps where you see the canoe. He was looking for a bicycle, but he found something else. He found a gun from the Second World War. And then the fire brigade came with divers, and in the end, they found five guns right there. Look to the right, in this alley, you will have a first glimpse of our belfry, the most important town that symbolizes the autonomy of our city. It has a golden dragon on top, which we proudly stole from Bruges. Built to give uh, the tourists a beautiful view of our towers when they would enter the city. So the first tower is the St. Nicholas Church from the 13th century. Then we have the Belfry from the 14th and then in the back you see the St. David Cathedral, which was finished in the 16th century. 
There you can find the world famous painting, the Ghent Altarpiece. They often say it's the oldest stepped gable in the world, this type of facade. They say, I'm not sure. The Dutch have the oldest one, the Germans have the oldest one, and we have it as well. Belgium is a unique country in that it has three official languages, Dutch, French, and German, that are each spoken in different parts of the country. Ghent is located in the Flanders region of Belgium, where they speak primarily Dutch. Papa's Hall, this means the Bonk's Hall. These alleys go back to the 12th century. For that reason, this uh, neighborhood is protected by UNESCO. It was an absolutely beautiful day in Ghent, and it was so enjoyable to just cruise along the canal, watching all of the people bustling around, enjoying their days. It was awesome to see all of the different students sitting along the side of the canals, eating their lunch, having drinks. Everyone just seemed to be having a great day. And it was just so beautiful taking in all of the unique architecture. We had never thought about visiting Belgium before. And after our day in Ghent, I think it's somewhere we'd really like to return and explore more. The castle was built in the late 12th century. For a long time, this served as our high, high court of justice and a center of political power. about to open a new museum about Belgian comic books. Maybe you, you were very, when you're thinking about Belgium, maybe you are thinking of comic books, but they have the highest density of comic books in the world. As you're cruising through the canal, there's several low bridges that you pass under. Emily and Scott loved reaching up to try to touch the undersides of each of the bridges as we went by. boat ride was awesome. We're just getting off. We got about an hour and a half to uh, explore Ghent a little bit. Uh, very exciting. Look at I me. Mean, look at this view. Amazing ride. Uh, excited to do some exploring. It was nice to explore on our own in Ghent and spend some time walking around the cobblestone streets. There were quite a few people out and about that day. It was a very busy day on the canals. a ton of time on our own, only about 45 minutes or an hour, and there were quite a few things we wanted to do, so we had to hurry to try to get some fries, some beer, some waffles, all in that quick time frame. It's just spectacular. It's stunning, really. So cool. That was the Ghent Belfry, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that's definitely worth a visit. It's been there since the 1300s and is topped with a fiery dragon, which is one of the mascots and symbols of the city of Ghent.
never invented Nap France. They're not French fries. We're here in Ghent or Hent, depending on who you speak to, enjoying these uh, these frites, mm -hmm. and they are mighty tasty. So what makes them different is that they're double fried. So they fry them, they take the potato, they is fry them. Lower temperature. Yep. Oh, motorbike. There's a motorbike coming by. Then they cool them down and then they... And they fry them again at a hotter temperature. Yep. Like and, look, flash fry. and then I asked for ketchup and he just dumped a whole ton of ketchup on these so things. Extra crispy. And the ketchup tastes a little different too, I think. Kind of sweeter. sweeter. Yep, yeah. definitely sweeter. But these uh, these fritz get a uh, Scotty G two thumbs up. I, I can't... called Freetin, actually. Freetin. Uh, I can't show you the two thumbs up because I'm using both of my hands at the moment. But trust me, these are good. Uh, Freetin? So how is it going, guys? It's good, really enjoying our day here in Belgium. Okay, we're just, what are we doing? We're sitting here, right here on the canal, taking in all the boats going by, all the little shops and cafes. It's a beautiful afternoon. I've got a pigeon right here. Oh, oh, and we're just enjoying this cone of fries. They're a bloody mess. They are a mess with that ketchup. <laughs> One of the things we really wanted to make sure to do while we were in Ghent is try an authentic Belgian waffle. So we made sure to stop at one of the little shops along the canal and it was so amazing to sit right by the water and enjoy a waffle with that view. Think. It looks amazing. It does oh look God. amazing. Look at this chocolate. And I'll let the flag on there too. Flag. Lizzie, you are in Ghent right now having a Belgium waffle of look actual at chocolate on these strawberries. Yeah. Too. How's this so far? Oh, I had a strawberry and chocolate. Yeah. And it's so good. I already broke my Emily already broke the coke, of course. I'm ready to find a beer. I mean, Belgium, you gotta have a beer and there's all these pubs around. We only have limited time, so I'm bailing on the waffles. I already had them. They're really great. Now it's time for me to quick hop into a pub. It would have been nice if we had had more time so we could have really slowed down and enjoyed ourselves. The culture in Belgium is one to really sit outside and take in the scenery and enjoy your time, not very rushed, which made it hard when we were trying to get food and drinks quickly with a short time frame to get back for our tour. are on the terrace at the Midtown Grill. I got my Roots Blonde Ale, thanks to Elizabeth. We're at a restaurant now, and I have it. And it is quite tasty, quite refreshing, beautiful scenery. Um, yeah, let's just sit back and relax. Well, that beer was so good, and since we had to go to so much trouble, we did another. After some time on our own, we reboarded our canal boat and took a short yet still scenic journey back to where we met our motor coach. It was a hot day in Ghent, and so some of the people were starting to put up umbrellas to block out the sun. It was a nice touch that they had on the boats in case it got a little too hot. On the left, we see a beautiful boat, the Barge. Now this one is a replica. The original one was a 17th century Barge, which was being used to transport the elite in between Roche and Ghent. This prestigious journey took them 8 hours to cover only 25 miles. That is a wrap on the Ghent Canal Cruise. It was awesome. The architecture, it just blows me away. Those buildings are unbelievable to look at. Um, we spent like 90 minutes uh, sailing out, then we had that hour and a half in town, which was great. Um, it kind of teases you a little bit because you want to do so much, but you know, that's kind of why you go to these destinations on a cruise is to learn for the future if, if you want to spend more time there. In Belgium, we definitely want to spend more time in. Um, not the prettiest background now, we're just waiting for a bus. <laughs> Basically, we're just waiting for our tour bus so we can get back to the ship. Last year, uh, we had uh, 8.3 million visitors in Bruges. If you calculate that per day, uh, there are more tourists 
in historical Bruges than inhabitants per day. So we're back on the ship, we're back in port. Interesting port, uh, I'll share some more thoughts on it. Definitely a lot different than the Norwegian ports that we stopped at this cruise. But, um, and we cut it to the max. I mean, it was a five hour excursion. So we all aboard was 5.30, we got back through security around 5.15. Open skate just started uh, in the Cplex. So let's hop in the Cplex, where we, we don't mess around. You know, we spent all this time in Ghent and in Belgium, and now we're gonna go to the Cplex and have Emily give it, give it a go at roller skating, something that we never do. So let's see how she does. Here we are live with the Cplex 24 seven interview table with Emily Gardner, who just had her first roller skating session. How did it go today? That might have been one of the worst things I've ever done in my entire life. Explain, please. <laughs> okay, okay. First of all, I didn't realize the roller skating was like right now when we went to see it. I thought I had like half an hour to like mentally prepare, get myself in the zone to roller skate. Which, mind you, I don't think I've ever roller skated before. I have ice skated once in my life. I once owned a pair of roller skates and royal, royal blades. Never used either of them. Um. Why I thought I was gonna be good at this, I don't know. So I kind of just stood there, moving myself by just pulling myself on the railing the whole time. And I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do. Anytime I tried, I had multiple children ask if I needed help. <laughs> that was, um, again, one of the lowest points of my life. And That's not a low point though, that's just fun, man. That's just fun. Have you ever had a child ask you if you need help with a <laughs> physical activity? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh... Whoa! <laughs> then, um, I fell at one point. Uh, I was just standing there and suddenly I was on the ground and I skinned my knee. Um, Would you do it again? That's to be decided. If you might have heard some background noise, that was Liz playing, what is this game called? Bagger. Well, now I'm being bad because you... You... She says she's doing bad. I call it she's doing bad O. <laughs> what happened here? Bago, we decided to head for a quick snack. Scott went with another burger and not Sorrento's. Maybe we should have done a burger counter. All right, we are leaving Z Bruges. As you can see behind me, we have these fun windmills. I really like the windmills. Look at those guys. It seems like they go on forever and ever and ever. Uh, yeah, last port. We are on our way to Southampton next. I don't think if I ever talked about this. Do you remember my shirt that I wore on embarkation day? It said, standing in the dock of Southampton. Um, if you know what that was a reference to, drop a comment below. I don't think I ever shared. If you get me, then you'll know what that's a reference to for sure. But that's where we're heading back to. We're going back to Southampton. But look how beautiful it is. Uh, very awesome. We're getting ready for dinner. Uh, before dinner though, we're gonna do 50s and 60s music trivia. And I love my 60s music, it's my favorite decade. Emily's really good at it too, and I know some 50s pretty well too. So I think we're gonna be quite competitive at 50s and 60s music trivia. So let's hope we are. We're going back to the music hall, which we were never at yesterday, which is crazy to think. It's kind of been one of our home bases this cruise. 
We are gonna go back to the music hall, then do main dining for our final dinner of the sailing. Let's uh, let's freshen up. The girls are ready. Look! Oh my God! I just want to be out there. It's so gorgeous. I love the sea. I love the cruise. Let's go! And I love '60s music. So let's go play. Are you ready for Name That Tune, 50s and 60s? Oh yeah. These are some real weirdos. Do you guys feel proud of yourselves? I feel great. It's 50s and 60s, baby. I I'm love dizzy. it. I feel dizzy. I just finished 50s, 60s trivia. I had to do the song and the artist, which... Name I'll, that too. Yeah, which I was really excited for the artist because I thought that gave us an advantage. Oh, that's the beat. Yeah. We got 30 out of 36, and it won it, baby. We are... I won it. I mean, Emily knew some stuff. We knew some stuff too. I mean, yeah, but I think we won. But we got there, baby. 50s and 60s, Name That Tune champions. Woo! that we're making our way back to the UK. All right, so it's the last night of the cruise. We're in the main dining. Liz, what did you order tonight? Oh, yeah. So on the menu tonight, they had a turkey dinner. Um, and anybody who knows me knows that my all-time favorite meal is a turkey dinner, like a Thanksgiving dinner. Um, I would get it any day of the week if it was available. So I was pretty excited. And I honestly can't remember what you got for your appetizer. Did you go with the Mediterranean thing? I did. There was a Mediterranean tapas that was basically like hummus and tzatziki and some pita um, and a Greek salad, I guess. So it sounded good. We'll see how it is. Hey, Emster, they doubled up on the bread tonight. How do you feel about that? Great. Great. And what did you order? Uh, I also with the turkey dinner. Thank but for my so starter, I got a Caesar salad and then we the same dessert as mom, the warm apple popcorn. So it's kind of funny. You did Caesar salad, which I did. You and mom both did turkey and the same dessert. I went... <laughs> I went with spaghetti. I know it seems weird. I almost ordered it on the first night. I went with that chicken curry, which was actually really fantastic that first night. But um, it says next to it, like it's a Royal Caribbean favorite. This is my first Royal Caribbean cruise, so I thought I had to go with it. So let's see if I uh, enjoy it or not. All right, I have my spaghetti bolognese and let's see what we got. Well, it's on my shirt, so that didn't last very long. But it's not too bad. I have the apple cobbler, which I think you've already seen me eat, because I remember now I went to take a bite. And then you and remember that you liked it. it very well, yeah. well, so let's anyway, take a look at it. It was good. So yeah, it's like a crumb topping, and then an apple pie filling, and there's some vanilla ice cream. And you already know it's going to be good. I do. Vanilla hard serve is hard to come across on the ship. Wouldn't you agree, Emily? So tonight, going with the strawberry vanilla. Um, I cleaned up that uh, spaghetti mess that I had earlier too. But I had to go with some vanilla ice cream and I love mixing it with some strawberry too. Let's see if I can have a safe bite here. Mm. That's really good. You know what? I didn't have a vanilla soft serve cone on this cruise. I just had the one chocolate. It was when we left the fjords on day five. And it was good. It was good. It was really good, but like, dang, like, how can I only have one ice cream cone? Probably because we're in Norway, it's a little colder. It was a little cooler. After dinner, we hopped into Bolero's for a quick drink before heading to the Royal Theater for Grunway Tom. Hey! <laughs> one for you, well, hey! <laughs> one for you, sir, well, hey! Well, hey. <laughs> Both legs are a dangerous way. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Here we go. Hey. 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 Hey.
risking future generations of jugglers. Okay. Both legs the same in a very difficult way. So the farewell show was pretty awesome. The magician was entertaining, but our guy. He wasn't a magician, he was an illusionist. Uh, the, the illusionist was good. He did some fun tricks, but again, it's kind of slow, low energy, build up to the punchline where our band with all the energy from the last night was just unreal again. Didn't you agree, Liz? Yeah, he was a lot of fun. We capped off our night in the music hall with a quick show by Rhythmocracy, followed by Battle of the Sexes. Play my jams back here, playing some Beatles music. Uh, just hanging in the Esplanade, got a slice here. Got a uh, Caribbean slice. Mm. 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 That was hot, freshly out of the oven. But yeah, we just did Battle of the Sexes. It was a lot of fun. Got kind of wild, as those shows tend to do. Um, the girls won tonight. Um, and they were better, they were better. I thought the guys got ripped off a little bit, but either way, it was loads of fun. The girls are getting some desserts right now. We're just enjoying the Esplanade on the last night of the cruise. Captain just told us we're gonna be late to port. Um, it was supposed to be like five o'clock. It's gonna be 7.30 a.m., which is kind of late actually for a disembarkation. So there's the girls right there. They got the goods. And yeah, we're just gonna sit, relax on our last night. On Anthem, what'd you get him? Chocolate chip cookies. What? Oh. Chocolate chip cookies! <laughs> so I never really finished what I was saying earlier, but the captain came over pretty late tonight, like around 11 p.m., basically saying that we are not going to arrive to port at like the 5 a.m. expected time. It's going to be 7.30, um, which is kind of wild um, if you were like in a hurry, <laughs> you know? If you had, this is why you don't book an early flight or anything like that on a disembarkation day because of things like that you know you could be delayed getting off the ship maybe there's a customs issue things like that so um so i know there's some people i seem to be worried there's the guest relations has a huge line right now but um so feel bad for those that might be in a pinch hopefully they can get off the ship quickly and get to their next destination but uh but we're not in that we're not in that situation at all we're not in a hurry to get off the ship tomorrow we're actually just kind of winding down tonight it's it's past midnight now, it's 12.07 p.m. We're a little tired. I'm just doing some exploring of the ship. Um, you know, these are the the two restaurants that we haven't dined in. We have Cheek and good old, I, I wanna say Grande, maybe it's Grand, I don't know. Kinda cool themed restaurants, it's so dark in there because like, well, it's midnight. <laughs> no one's having any meals right now. But I was just walking through the casino too. My ATM card did not work, um, so. I was too lazy to go up to the room and grab some cash, so I just watched people play blackjack, craps, stuff like that. I feel like I was a cooler, so I just had to leave. Everyone I watched like got destroyed, absolutely destroyed. Amazing cruise. Um, yeah, just, I don't know what else to say. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention though, it's due to the rough seas. We got some rough seas tonight, so the ship's gotta move a little bit slower to cut through all these uh, choppiness, basically. So. That's why we have the late arrival back to Southampton. I'm, I, I feel pretty awake. We actually gained an hour because uh, early on in the cruise, we lost an hour. So it's really like 11.08. People are shouting in the casino. So 
I actually kind of want to walk around a little bit. We'll see what happens. Um, but I don't want to wake the girls up, so I'll probably go back to the room and call it a night. But uh, thanks for cruising with, with us. It's been fabulous. We'll talk to you in the morning, all right? We'll talk to you in the next episode. Thanks a lot. Bye. Oh, one last thing. I really like these 3D like ship models as you walk through. You know, in case if you're lost, I mean, I figured out this ship basically in one day. But it tells you like, you know, where all the staterooms are, what's on each level, then it gives you a more detailed um, description of the level you're currently on. I think that's awesome. But anyway, I think I'm gonna head back up to the room, just relax, unwind a little bit. But yeah, we'll just see you in the morning. But as always, hit the like button, subscribe, you know, all the YouTube stuff, you know. Uh, really appreciate you all watching. If we can get to like, I say like 300 subscribers. I know that's such a small number, but double what we have right now. If we can get to 300 during the series, I'm going to buy a better camera so that I have more stability and all this stuff, which means if, if I can get 300 people to consistently watch, I think it's worth trying to do this more. As we're done with this trip, so. 300 consistently? How about we try over 550? That's right. At the moment I was recording that, it was June 27th, wrapping up our last night on the first cruise of Anthem of the Seas. And I think we're like at 120-ish subscribers. The, the channel was fairly new. I set a goal at that moment for 300, hoping that the European series would build up some momentum. And boom, here we are at 550. You all are awesome. And because of that, you know, I had to follow through. So I'm using the new camera right now. I think it looks pretty good. Excited to share new content with the new camera, maybe some new audio improvements as well. But most importantly, thanks for liking and subscribing the channel. The support is awesome. If you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? Come on, come on, join us. Have fun watching our videos. We're kind of silly, we're not that great, but you know what? It's still pretty fun, I think. But yeah, so let's go back to the closing and wrap up day seven on Anthem of the Seas. So anyway, like, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. Thanks for watching as always. Love you all. We'll talk to you real soon.